Hello everyone. Um, good morning and welcome you to our um, today's webinar regarding um, Luna EMG, clinical introduction to Luna EMG. Basically, we will start with um, the question what exactly Luna EMG is. So um, Luna EMG is the robotic device for dedicated for upper and lower limb rehabilitation, both for training and assessment. Uh, for neurological and orthopedic patients. And the most unique feature of Luna EMG is the EMG triggered robotic movement. Um, how basically it works, Luna EMG detects the signal from the patient's body, from the patient's muscle, and based on that assists with the given move. So um, based on that unique feature, uh, Luna EMG allows to train to exercise with those patients who cannot voluntarily move their limbs. So the activity is not really presented like visible um, by a manual muscle test. How does it work? I will explain also on the patient's uh, video. Here you can see the patients after the patient after the spinal cord injury, he is like C4 um, injury. We were assessing, like um, asking him to, uh, to contract the muscle, to uh, make a movement to flex the elbow, uh, and he was uh, wasn't really able to activate the biceps, so we can really see the movement. And in comparison, the left hand side is uh, way better, right? So we could perform at least the biceps flexion and extension. So based on this very little activity on the right hand side. We actually put the electrodes on the biceps and on the pronator. But based on the biceps, uh, Luna EMG detects uh, his really weak um, uh, muscle activity. Um, and based on that, assists with the given move. So here, the patient is triggering the movement, and Luna helps in, um, to, in the movement, of making it like through the whole range of motion. So how does it really uh, work? The first step is the brain, right? So in the brain, there is the desire to move, the intention coming out from the patient. And, um, and then the EMG sensors, which are uh, here on, on, the, on the patient's muscle, um, they are the surface EMG electrodes. They capture the voluntary um, muscle activity from the patients. Um, and uh, based on that, uh, they transfer it into the movement. So here, Luna responds to this um, desire to move, right? And provide the active assistive uh, movement together with the real time biofeedback, which the patient can really observe um, on the screen. So uh, based on that, uh, there is a big role for this um, EMG biofeedback. So the patient really enhances the brain plasticity and uh, it really allows for the um, motor relearning and it makes uh, the, the things go really uh, way faster than without the biofeedback. Um, Luna EMG is the whole rehabilitation, whole body rehabilitation system, uh, system. So it means that it has six attachments so we can work with all main body joints upper and lower beam, um, as well as um, the pelvic floor. So you can also uh, put the, the special uh, uh, channels for the internal uh, probes. Uh, all the training um, programs and all the features can be divided into the assessment. So the patient's, let's say, evaluation and the training. So basically the training uh, consists of um, EMG biofeedback, um, EMG assisted movement through the EMG, um, um, then a continuous passive uh, motion, so the CPM, and active resistive training, the print types. I will tell about it a little bit more later on. Um, then the assessment tool, right? So we can evaluate the patient with uh, muscle activity. Um, we can evaluate the patient's muscle force. Uh, we can uh, measure the range of motion and we can assess um, the proprioception. 
Based on all the features, uh, Luna EMG can assist the patient through the whole uh, rehabilitation process. So we can provide the training in all stages of rehabilitation based from zero, which in manual muscle scale means no contraction, up to five, so there is a full range of motion. Patient is totally active and can work uh, over the resistance and perform many repetitions. Um, so let's keep in mind that manual muscle scale is the subjective scale, right? So here we can we can work uh, passively for with the patient grade, let's say zero to one. So this is the patient who really doesn't make any visible movement. We cannot see and feel the contraction. Then through uh, active assistive training based on the EMG, we can use Luna EMG for uh, the patient grade, let's say one to three, right? So then we put the electrodes on and um, there are our reactive EMG trainings. For those who uh, get some muscle force already, uh, we can provide the training, um, different types of training from active to, to resistive. So this is the patient grade three to five. So as you can see, Luna EMG implies itself in every reorganization uh, phase of the rehabilitation process. So it comes together with the patient from the very early stage, which means even like hours after the incident, then um, the early mobilization, even at the patient's base, uh, bed um, days, weeks. So here we are going to restore some impairments. So this is more the outpatient rehabilitation or the rehabilitation in the facility uh, on-site rehabilitation ward, for example. And also uh, we can provide the rehabilitation uh, like uh, for the part of maintenance of physical condition, the patient uh, is like uh, supported uh, with the device for the whole uh, rehabilitation journey. Let's start with uh, the, the basics. So what is EMG, right? So as we use surface EMG, uh, we need to know what is electromyography itself. So EMG is the study, electromyography is the study of the muscle function through the inquiry of the electrical signal that the muscles emanate. So as I told you um, before, we uh, use for that the surface EMG electrodes, which are capturing, taking the signal from the patient's muscle. And based on that uh, detected signal, we can provide the assistance with the movement. This picture presents the raw signal, which means that this is like not clear uh, signal coming uh, directly from uh, the patient's uh, body. So as you can see, it's a totally mess, up and down lines, uh, values um, uh, positive and negative. Uh, what we can do is uh, to make the signal a little bit more clear. So we are taking the peak and the mean um, values uh, so that it means that the raw signal, which you can see here down, is being transferred into the rectifier signal, which exactly looks like um, on the screen now. So this is what we see on the screen. This is already the Rectified signal, very clear. You can see two channels, electrode um, EMG activity from the biceps and triceps in, in this case. And this is a uh, way less messy than the raw signal. So it's easier to be read it, easier to uh, evaluate the muscle activity of a certain patient. This is the example on how can we use the EMG on the evaluation. This is the evaluation for the trapezius muscle contraction, and we are comparing the left to right comparison. The blue uh, electrodes uh, is the left side, and the, right, the, the red electrode is the right side. And what can we see from the graph is that uh, the patient here um, had uh, a little bit more uh, contraction, more activity on the right-hand side, so we can maybe um, assess him with uh, more um, contraction on this on the side 
we can uh, suspect that uh, as she's like the right handed, then there is a little bit more tension on the right hand side, which is perfectly shown on this picture. And in the chart, you can see the summary of the minimum, maximum, and average muscle tone of each channel. To sum up, uh, the really basics of this EMG, it allows to directly look into the muscle. So we can really focus on the muscle activity and the muscle itself being very precise by using our surface EMG. Um, furthermore, it allows to measure the muscular performance, so the muscle activity of the patient. And here we can also be very sensitive, very precise. It helps also in decision making uh, before, after surgery. So as I mentioned to you before, um, manual muscle scale is really like a subjective one. So basically when we assess the patient for like say zero, right? And um, so we can say that there is no movement, no muscle activity because we cannot really see the contraction and we cannot feel it. Uh, but after putting the EMG electrodes and like looking more deeply into the muscle through the electrodes, through the signal, then we can see that the zero is not really a zero because the patient represents slight but stable um, muscle activity, like 10 or 20 microvolts. So it's already uh, putting him in another group. He's not really totally innervate. Benefits of EMG, uh, we can also think about the documentation of the treatment and planning the training regimes um, for the patient, for his training, for the biofeedback on different levels. It helps to find and train their muscle because uh, we can also try to work with the EMG biofeedback even before we apply the training based on the re reactive electromyography, so our training programs like trigger and hold, trigger and release, we can uh, work with the patient based on the EMG um, evaluation so that he can see where are his muscle and which muscle should be contracted to get a certain movement. Um, it allows to analyze and to improve their rehabilitation. And of course, it detects muscle response. It's uh, very useful also for the uh, hands-on therapy, like when we worked with the patient one-to-one. -one. What does the science tell about um, the benefits of EMG? First of all, uh, the EMG biofeedback is very much recommended as a tool for the stroke rehabilitation. Um, it helps really to um, train the muscle, the, the upper limb, and it's very valuable, valuable to provide visual and audio feedback for the muscle activation. And this is what we exactly do in the EMG biofeedback training program. Um, then EMG biofeedback exercises are also improving the muscle strength. Um, um, in comparison, EMG biofeedback versus the conventional um, occupational therapy, uh, there is uh, a lot for EMG biofeedback on improving hand function. So um, it really increased significantly um, uh, the voluntary contraction of the hand um, and muscles, the, the policies brevis in, in this particular um, case. And uh, last but not least, uh, statistically significant improvements for the functional scales, like popular one, uh, the Brunstorm scale uh, for the upper extremity, and also the Ashworth scale can be also seen uh, more uh, for the group in uh, using EMG biofeedback, according to another study. The main and the most unique feature of Luna EMG is EMG triggered robotic movement, EMG assisted movement, we can also say. Um, how can we implement? Imagine the patient, right? So this patient, mostly neurological, let's compare it to the healthy one, healthy patient, a healthy uh, person, I'm sorry. Um, so when the person has sufficient muscle force, right, and muscle coordination and the range of motion. So all the functional movement components are on pretty good level. 
then it's really easy to introduce this patient, this, this person, to um, specific task-oriented training, right? So based on the everyday um, activities. But if the patient doesn't really have uh, the components like strong enough uh, and not enough range of motion, not enough muscle coordination, right? This, these are the, the impairments. Uh, he will definitely try to do the task, try to perform, but he will uh, compensate the movement. So it, and as much as he repeat this compensate movement, it will lead to the bad movement pattern, right? So he can perform the task, but uh, it's not really properly um, uh, made. So what can we do? Uh, first of all, um, with the use of Luna EMG, we should try to improve those components which are on uh, insufficient level. Depending on the patient, we can evaluate them at the first um, because we want to avoid as much compensation as possible, right? So uh, here in this reason, um, we can implement Luna EMG in the rehabilitation process and train with the patient those, those functions. Uh, and also what is important that model learning will still occur during this task specific training. Um, but the components should be trained on Luna EMG, right? So we can perform the strength training, we can perform the coordination training, and then we can uh, work with our patient more on the functional level, uh, but without these components which are building the movement, the patient is not able to perform the task, right? So, um, of course, with Luna EMG, you can also uh, perform more repetition. We can adjust the patient capabilities. Uh, we can use the active assistive mode. We can unweight the limbs. So many, many conditions can be achieved to uh, adjust to every patient uh, differently. Of course, EMG triggered assistive movement is also very much represented in, uh, in the science, by science, like in the literature. So uh, first of all, the uh, EMG uh, assistive training for stroke survivors are, uh, is really beneficial because they can be trained in unreached range with their voluntary um, EMG activity, right? Um, and also uh, very much highlighted in the studies is that stressing active contribution through EMG is really uh, very much beneficial for the stroke patients. Um, EMG-driven robotic training for the hand uh, has uh, more influence, more, like uh, the patient uh, gets more independence in um, daily living and they uh, are more affecting in um, contracting and relaxation phase of the movement. Um, as well as uh, it's also proven that robots showed better performance when compared to passive rehabilitation robots. So it's always active uh, over the task. So this we, we should also remember that it's better to perform less active repetition than hundreds of tasks. To overcome muscle weakness, I would like to highlight here that robotics are really ideal uh, for the patients uh, who are severely affected uh, because we can use uh, some external assistance to overcome the problems of the muscle weakness. Another training uh, program and um, training possibility for the patient is continuous passive motion. So we can also benefit from that and Luna EMG has, uh, has this functionality. So passive exercises, we can uh, provide passive exercises for the patient who are really great zero to one as well. So to uh, either maintain or to increase the range of motion, um, the flexibility of soft tissues, 
Uh, we can also work through the motor memory by observing in the same time EMG. So in Luna EMG, you can use either the CPM without EMG real-time view, but I strongly recommend to put the EMG electrodes for those patients who, for which, for who we are not really sure whether they present any activity and asking them, try to help with the movement um, can show us some little um, variations of the EMG signal at the screen. So based on that, we can really see whether the patient has some muscle activity or not. Uh, by using the uh, CPM for the patient who are, for example, immobilized in bed, we can also prevent the joint contractures and all the side effect of immobilization. We can use it also as a warm-up before the other exercises. Also, where the patient has some stiffness, we can provide the CPM progressive training. Uh, so slowly, slowly gets to the uh, full range of motion. Science behind passive stretching, providing by the, the, the robotic rehabilitation, robotic devices, can decrease the spasticity of the ankle after the stroke. Also, some CPM, this is like highlighted here, that the gentle CPM rehabilitation pro protocol provided by the rehabilitation roads it's uh, is like giving less risk uh, of the injury uh, than aggressive early passive rehabilitation provided by the therapist, so by the hands-on. And last thing, implementing robotic passive movement into early bed rehabilitation. So the early phase of rehabilitation is really facilitating neuroplasticity uh, and improve motor control and durability. So what for those patients who already have some muscle activity and muscle force? We can provide active resistive training and with Luna EMG, we have different types of those. Um, why re resistive training is so beneficial? Um, it's very much beneficial for the stroke because progressive resistance training can be effective tool for maintaining uh, muscle strength in the long-term perspective. And when we are talking about the stroke survivors, we uh, keep in mind that they will have the rehabilitation um, until like the rest of your life, I think. The effectiveness of the resistance exercise strong, uh, program among elderly people I will tell more about it also um, further in the presentation. We need to uh, focus also on the frailty syndrome. Uh, and uh, it's very much recommended to use uh, resistive training for the elderly because we need to implement the pre-frail pre uh, training program to keep the muscle power and their uh, muscle uh, functional capacity. Another highlight here, isokinetic strength training uh, is very much effective in improving muscle strength. Uh, then it transfers into the walking function and then functional mobility um, after the stroke. And uh, for the orthopedic cases, it's also uh, presented here in the, the in the study by uh, Lindy Jacobson, progressive strength training after total knee um, replacement is really a feasible uh, tool and it really increases the knee strength and then transfers into function as well. Uh, so the patient has less pain and are able to uh, recover really quicker. The trainings with the resistance in Luna EMG are really different. So we can provide the isokinetic mode, which in our system is called dynamic reversal. What does it mean? Um, that the patient receives the, the resistance that he generates on the device. So the faster he goes with the movement, the more resistance he gets. What uh, what it means, the faster, because the faster you move the extension, the more force you put in making this movement. So basically the patient gives a lot of force making the movement in, in like very fast. And the resistance is changing. 
So it fully adapts to the, the, the muscles of the patient, to the pain, uh, to the patient's fatigue and speed of movement and strength also increase. Um, the dynamic reversal can be also used for research. We can uh, evaluate the patient muscle force because here we can like generate the maximum power. Another type um, of the training is the um, elastic resistance. So here the elastic resistance, it means um, it imitates the, the rubber teraband tape generates greater levels of muscle activity but involves lower joint forces so it's more safe um, there is lower risk of the injury and the last type uh, is more the isotonic training uh, we can also apply it here with the fixed torque in a specific direction so i always compare it like to have it as a dumbbell Right, so the the way the resistance is constant from the top to the bottom of the movement, uh, the patient keeps the same resistance, and uh, the goal of the therapy here is to improve the strength of the patient, and can be applied for those who are graded like from three to five in the manual muscle scale. Okay, so let's move quickly to the main clinical concepts behind uh, Luna EMG. Um, these are neuroplasticity, motor control and motor learning and constraint induced movement therapy. First of all, neuroplasticity, right? I know that all of you are familiar with neuroplasticity term, but just to give you a quick remind uh, that neuroplasticity is the ability of the nervous system to respond to some internal or external stimuli and uh, then reorganizing the structures, the functions and the connections. And it can be done um, like by different uh, on, on different levels, right? So when we have the lesion, then we lose the connection, right, between two uh, cells or two like parts, right? So uh, the neuroplasticity is modificating the nervous system, like either on the cellular, on the behavioral level, and it's always triggered by the activity. Right, so here we provide the training, we provide hundreds of repetition, and based on that, new connections are being built. And there are um, different types of rebuilding the connection, like we can have sprouting and we can have unmasking. The effects on uh, the motor um, learning, right, the motor relearning, let's say is mostly caused by the repetition. So here the repetition matters uh, a lot. Uh, this is a new form of the activity and uh, to retrain, rebuild the uh, new neural connection, we, have, uh, we need the large functional component here. So why repetition matters? Uh, it's already proven, scientifically proven that increased amounts of tasks repetition cause cortical changes and then we can observe further improvement after the stroke um, so it's very uh, important that um, the patient after the stroke after the when we see the lesion and we want to rebuild the function restore uh, and make like some new connections, then we need to use a lot of repetitions, right? Hundreds of uh, repetition. And um, what we observe in everyday clinical practice that the numbers of repetitions uh, which are performed in our everyday practice are not really um, sufficient for the patients to, uh, which are recruited to restore the function, right? To um, enhance the process of neuroplasticity uh, and they're really far below uh, the needs. That's why we really strongly focus on our unique feature which is the reactive electromyography. 
uh, because it allows even the patient who cannot really uh, voluntarily move their limbs uh, to um, perform active repetitions, right? Because we need to keep in mind that passive movement is really not enough. Another uh, important concept, so motor control and motor relearning. What is motor control? This is the ability to regular, uh, regulate or even more to direct the mechanism, which is essential to movement. And basically the central nervous system is organizing all the muscles which are involved in, in the movement and also joints. So it's all together coordinated and transfers into the functional movement. How can we link it to uh, like robotics? How robotics are linked to motor learning? Um, first of all, uh, there is an aspect of segmentation because uh, with the use of robotic rehabilitation, we can simplify our practice because we are doing a partial movement. In, uh, instead of um, the whole functional movement, we are working on the components. We are like uh, spreading the movement into the parts and working on the parts, which further later on in the rehabilitation process transfers into the movement like more functional. Uh, we can also simplify the therapy by reduce the degrees of freedom and motivational aspect. Uh, by using a robotic device connected with um, um, biofeedback, right? The patient gets more is more motivated. We need to remember that our patient really need a success uh, at the end of the therapy. It can be the end of the day, so we should finish the therapy with something. Uh, which allows our patient to be like to, to succeed, right? The exercise should be like provided for um, for the success, so the patient feels like he's improving and see that he's getting better. Also, EMG uh, biofeedback, the biofeedback, the visual feedback, audio feedback also uh, can be noticed by the patient. So he can notice the result. He can see that he's improving in scores, right? So it's really also motivating them. And the gamification, right? So collecting the points, um, comparing one result to another, um, getting uh, higher and higher in the levels of the game also keep our patients more engaged and motivated. About the feedback, uh, various feedback forms like um, visual feedback, audio feedback, the feedback from the results also give our uh, self as a therapist and the patient more information about the progress. And what is the motor learning um, itself? It's uh, a set of process associated with practice of exper or experience and it leads to uh, changes in the capability of the movement, right? This is the definition according to Schmidt and, to Schmidt and Lee. Um, and why we are talking about the robotics here? Because uh, robots have a lot more capacity to deliver the training with high intensity, high dosage, uh, repeatability, um, adjustments, flexibility. So these are all the components which are really required to uh, enhance the neuroplasticity, which we so much focus on, especially in the neuro rehabilitation. Um, based on that, the, the patients recover uh, more quicker, right? And can um, exercise more like, not really frequently, but then can be more engaged in the rehabilitation process. What are the stages of motor learning and how can we uh, implement all the stages? How can we provide the stages uh, with the use of learning MG? Stage one, this is cognitive stage. So here the patient actually detects, like when he's learning a new task, he detects what to do, what should I do, what works, right, to perform this movement, 
Um, how can I see if I am performing the task right? What should I do to perform the task? What, which muscle should I contract, right? So here, a good example would be either EMG evaluation, so the real-time EMG um, sign or real-time EMG uh, view on the screen during performing some exercise, or a good idea is to put EMG electrodes during the CPM training, and then you ask the patient, try to assist in a given move. And then he can also see that even though the movement is not really visible, but the muscles are really working like somewhere deep inside. Stage two, this is fixation. Um, stage like more associative stage. So here the patient is learning how to do this. It's more um, uh, adjustable. Uh, we can adjust in how the skills are being performed. And here it really transfers into the trigger and release and trigger and hold. So our reactive EMG training programs. So the patient is more learning how to coordinate between contraction and relaxation, how to control uh, the muscle contraction, how to keep it, when should I relax. And stage three, this is more autonomous, right? So we can also imagine gait, right? Walking and in the same time talking on the phone. This is more about the automatization. So do it by but not really paying so much attention on what I'm doing, right? And here we can also imagine um, our patient playing the EMG reactive game because he need to control um for example the space shooter right our our game uh by using the rules from the trigger and hold so the patient needs to contract and hold during the whole range of motion in order to move the starship left or right but he's so much focused on the game scenario collecting stars avoiding rocks falling down that he is not really paying much attention on how he's doing it so this is like the most advanced stage uh, when we go more into the automatization of the process. Concentrate induced movement therapy. What stays here for um, these four letters? Let's talk about a little bit about the learned non-use cycle. So when we have an injury, imagine stroke. Right, so for example, hemiplegia, so um, just like not really the disease, but some uh, symptoms caused by neurological event. It can be stroke, it can be traumatic brain injury, um, and mostly it's this hemiplegia is um, affecting one side of the body, it can be either upper limb or lower limb or upper and lower, right? Um, and in the very initial period after injury, uh, like we can see that there is the let's let's keep the upper limb as an example. So there is the upper limb weakness, and moving this affected limb is more effortful for the for the patient. So he cannot really move the limb. He tries and he uh, compensates. Um, the movement because he's using the strongest parts, which are mostly somewhere around the shoulder, right? Um, and and as it's really hard for him to perform the movement, he's slowly, slowly starting to um, stop using actually or using less the affected side, right? So there is uh, slowly less movement in the weaker arm. Uh, why it's so? Because he is really not being successful in using this arm. He cannot reach the things, grab the, uh, the things. Uh, he cannot peek, he cannot like um, pull up the arm, right? So as being so much unsuccessful, he really stops to use the arm uh, slowly, slowly. Um, and when you are, when you don't use it, you lose it, right? So these individuals often forget how to use their affected arm, and they learn new behaviors with the stronger arm, right? So the stronger arm is like taking the function from the weaker one. 
and it leads to the compensatory behavior. Um, and then we are talking about the learned non-use. So it's often um, it's often presented as neglect, right? And um, this is uh, known as a learned non-use. Um, the learned non-use, it's not really permanent. We need to keep in mind that this is totally reversal and it's really possible only when uh, we use very intense treatment of the weaker arm. So um, learn non use, like here, we need to perform really um, strong um, therapy, not really, like, let's say not strong, maybe uh, I can say more uh, focus on uh, the affected arm therapy. This is the key component of um, the constraint induced movement therapy because we need to restrain the stronger arm. The same time undergoing constraint induced movement therapy uh, because we want to encourage the person to use more the weaker arm in a situation when they normally uh, learn to use um stronger arm permanently right uh, so with this sole focus on the weaker arm and as well using biofeedback positive reinforcement um uh, it can be also po positive feedback from the therapist the patient is more and more motivated and then slowly slowly increase the uh, arm function try to move to uh, is trying to, to use it more and how to overcome the learned non-use, uh, of course, based on this um, constraint-induced uh, therapy um, example, um, especially to treat the chemiclegia in the arm, we can help to overcome this no uh, learned non-use, improve the amount and the quality um, of the movement. Uh, and here, with Luna MG, you can, of course, uh, apply this concept because we are focusing on the affected arm. That's why we are only like this is the device which provides one limb therapy in the time uh, so that the patient is really focusing on moving this non used um, limb. Okay, so we are already over with the theory, so let's start with some experience with our patient. First of all, I will share with you the diagnostic and treatment experience with um, our neurological patients. The first case which I want to present is um, the peripheral uh, nerve paresis. So we have the patient um, uh, after the paresis of the peripheral nerve. It was the hematoma of the iliopsoas muscle, and he uh, lost his activity on the quadriceps. No, really, not active movement. Slight muscle activity. He started uh, like uh, the therapy being lying in the bed, and the goal of the therapy was to increase the activity of the quadriceps and the muscle control for further gait training. And what can you see here on the uh, screen is like the patient um, treatment example. We were using um, here the trigger and hold and trigger and release for the quadriceps, mostly for the knee extension. Um, so flexion extension. Uh, we also apply this training program for um, the initial contact phase for the swing phase so that the patient uh, was working with two channels uh, first uh, contraction on the foot through the TBI anterior, uh, so the dorsiflexion, as you can see now, he's applying the electrodes for that, and the second channel response for the quadriceps. So uh, in the agonist mode, two channels need to be contracted in the same time in order to get the assistance from Luna EMG. So here the patient could train uh, for the certain gait phase. And uh, the next video is the EMG biofeedback exercise also for the gait facilitation. 
Uh, so the patient was um, more in the functional way, learning how to contract, how to keep the contraction, and how to activate the muscle here without the help of um, Luna EMG. Uh, the whole therapy was like two months, and the result was that the patient was able to maintain standing position, as you can see here in the second video, and slowly, slowly started to walk with the crutches. Okay, another patient, this is the traumatic brain injured patient. So after the car accident, left side uh, hemiplegia for upper and lower limb. Uh, and the goal of the therapy was to uh, improve the gait function and get more coordination up from upper and lower uh, limb. The protocol we applied was trigger and hold, trigger and release for the knee extension and foot extension. So basically all components for the gait, the dorsal flexion. And during these two months, you can see on the left video, the patient balance and coordination um, was not really good here on the left-hand side. And he improved the walking so much that he could uh, walk a little bit more independently. He was more secure with the walking aid. Okay. Another case, um, spinal cord injured patient, um, and here um, the goal of the therapy was to um, increase uh, the muscle activity and muscle control for the lower limbs. And here, this is the example on how can we implement Luna EMG and the EMG real-time um, evaluation during the hands-on therapy. So here the therapist is actually providing the hands-on therapy one-to-one -one session. And in the same time, is looking on the screen whether the, the patient is contracting, activating the right muscles in the right order. So um, it's really controlling uh, the therapy effects uh, in the real time. So it's also a very good tool for the hands-on therapy. Um, the results after the three months of Luna EMG training, the patient was really able to a little bit move the limb, right? Um, to extend the knee, but a lot of force comes also from the hip. Uh, she continued the training uh, for the trigger and fall, trigger and release for the knee, both in supine lying uh, and in sitting position. And after 15 months, this was the outpatient uh, patient, she was able to move her limb in a more controlled way, right? So the range of motion was like higher, better. Mm -hmm. And uh, the movement was more isolated. She could also control it better. She could stop in between. Um, so there is really a great improvement in that. Another patient, this is the amputee patient. It is really nice example uh, on how EMG biofeedback can be uh, really um, useful for uh, for the patient before prosthesis. Uh, so we were working on muscle control. As you can see here, the patient has a lot of channels, like two channels, and he's playing the isometric game. And thanks to the therapy, um, he could get more um, advanced prosthesis because he could like more be more precise in the muscle control. So um then uh, the prosthesis can be also more advanced. Another group of patients who really benefits from the AMG, these are the MS patients, so a lot of fatigue, uh, spasticity of these patients, um, but they can really train active. Um, one example of the use uh, trigger and hold for the neuromuscular facilitation of the hamstrings, the training five days a week um, for half an hour during two weeks. And as an effect, there was the relearning of how to contract 
um, the, the knee and how to lower the co-contraction of quadriceps in the same time. So it uh, finally transfers into improvement of the, in the quality of gait. Another patient, uh, also a multiple sclerosis, more trigger and hold in um, together with dynamic reversal in the training program. Here also increasing uh, the contraction time and force quadriceps as a goal of the therapy. Uh, the training was like five times a week for 40 minutes and all together it was like three weeks of therapy and the effect also relearning how to contract the extensors because we are working more on the quadriceps and uh, it transfers into the improvement in the quality of gait, especially during the phase of initial contact. Um, another stroke, uh, stroke example, so uh, the patient with frozen shoulder, um, he had really a big pain due to that condition and the goal of the therapy was to reduce the pain and increase um, the range of motion. What we did, um, we did like the CPM program both uh, full range and progressive trigger and hold, trigger and release, some orthopedic games. And during um, uh, here on the video, you can see how we perform the, the exercises like the flexion, extension, abduction, and abduction of the uh, shoulder. Um, it, the patient was coming like two, three times per week, and he get, got like 60 minutes per session. Uh, during uh, like three months and it resulted um, uh, also in the great uh, like in lowering um, the pain so the pain decreased and the range of motion was really uh, improved especially for flexion and extension the left video presented the patient before the therapy and the right video uh, is like the patient after three months. There is still uh, a lot to do, like a lot of components on which we can work, but we can really see the slight um, improvement. Um, another patient uh, after the stroke, a young patient uh, around like 20 years old, here, the therapy was more focused on the lower limb. So as you can see, we were working two channels um, on the fibularis and tibialis muscles. So we were training uh, in the agonist mode uh, foot aversion. So in this movement, both muscles should be active to get the assistance of Luna ING. Um, this is the example on how can we really uh, provide um, the therapy for the foot, which also transfers into the gait later on. Julien Barret syndrome, um, quadriplegic patient. The goal of the therapy was to improve the foot movement so that the patient has uh, less trouble while walking. And we used mostly CPM and both reactive electromyography training. And as a result, he increased a muscle force, muscle control, and uh, both dorsi and plantar flexion. Um, another example on how we can use Luna EMG also for the stroke patient is the facial palsy. This is the patient after the stroke with uh, the facial palsy. Uh, due to the stroke, of course, we were working with the EMG biofeedback um, and the EMG diagnostics so the real-time EMG view so that the patient see um, where is the muscle, how to contract, uh, whether it's uh, really able to be activated. And then the patient was uh, trying to contract for some um, seconds to keep the contraction, to make it like more strong in the EMG um, biofeedback uh, program. So as you can see on the video, also very positive um, reaction towards the device. So it's really like uh, influencing the motivation. 
Uh, our study, we published the study in um, a medicina uh, journal, um, the influence of the EMG triggered robotic movement on walking muscle force and spasticity after the ischemic stroke. And we compared two groups. Uh, the robotic group, uh, like for the intervention, was like 30 patients, and the rehabilitation was based on the individual standard physiotherapy and lower knee training with the use of Luna EMG. And the second group, control group, so the rehabilitation was based on individual um, standard physiotherapy and the use of lower limb rotor. Uh, the same time of the therapy, six weeks, one hour and a half per day, uh, five days a week. And as a result, as you can see on the right hand side, um, uh, the patients who trained with Luna EMG, so the intervention group, uh, resulted in a slight but uh, stable increase of the tight circumference and higher decrease in the spasticity in comparison to the control group um, over the time. Another group of patients for whom can we apply an IMG training, these are the patients, um, like orthopedic patients. So common problems which we are targeting here um, is uh, the limitation of the range of motion, first of all, and impaired proprioception. And it can be caused by some degenerative changes, so due to the age, uh, post-traumatic changes, all the dislocation, fractures, post-operative conditions like arthroscopy, uh, not only for the lower limb, but also for after the damage to rotator cuff. Uh, instability on the shoulder joint, painful shoulder syndrome, which was already also presented as a neuro case. Um, we also evaluated uh, one of the um, assessment tool uh, from Luna AMG, so Joint Position Sense, and it was already published in the Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, so um, the study group. Uh, who consists of 24 healthy men, and the joint position sense assessment was used together with our um, meso seat um, with the use of Luna EMG. And we were evaluating the knee flexion, both left and right, uh, in active and passive assessment mode. Uh, we made two measurements with seven days break time in between, and the results show that Luna EMG rehabilitation robot, especially joint position sense assessment, is very reliable tool for assessing the proprioception in passive mode. Uh, here you can see the example of uh, how can we uh, provide the therapy in more functional way, uh, addressing the problems and the needs of the patient. This is the driver and he wants to come back uh, to driving the car after his car injury. Um, so uh, he wants to work also on how to change the, the gears, right? So here we can apply both active and as a resistive training um, for this movement. Another type of uh, therapy is for, I'm sorry, for the shoulder, right? So we can also work with uh, external and internal rotation uh, of the shoulder in um, a lying position. Um, Lula EMG can be also used for uh, our little patients. So in the pediatric, um, among children, uh, the patients who can really benefit from Luna EMG are the CP patients, uh, spinal muscular atrophy, Duchenne muscle atrophy, spinal cord, and as here on the screen, brachial palsy patients. Um, let me just quickly introduce you to this patient condition. So the girl has damaged nerves which were like responsible for motor function in her left arm it was due to some complication during the birth um, she underwent several nerve uh, reconstruction surgeries uh, not really visible 
voluntary muscle contraction in the arm. Uh, the full innervation diagnostic was performed with the use uh, of Luna EMG for biceps, triceps, and the deltoid. And uh, with confirmed innervation, the patient started the therapy with reactive electromyography, so trigger and hold and trigger and release exercise. And the goal of the therapy was to build up the motor unit recruitment and increase the muscle activity. We were training for over four months, three times per week. And the result was greater improvement in motor unit recruitment and she gained more muscle activity. Let me present the results from this certain uh, patient. As you can see, these are like two um, assessment terms. We were assessing uh, first the biceps and the triceps. Um, and then after, let's say, one month, five, five weeks of therapy, um, another assessment, and the progression was around 85% uh, uh, for the biceps and around 22% in the um, muscle activity for the triceps. So she really improved a lot during uh, that uh, training. Uh, spinal muscular atrophy. Um, here we uh, we can work with the patient by using EMG biofeedback, some orthopedic games. We are using a lot of games when we uh, plan the therapy for the pediatric. And here, um, the goal of the therapy was the strengthening of the biceps, the the coordination, right, and the patient really um, increased the muscle tone. Uh, and the range of motion and was very positive towards um, the device. Uh, what can we recommend for the design of the session for this particular case for the spinal muscular atrophy? It, it, it of course depends on the patient condition. Starting from just the EMG biofeedback, we can assess um, um, by using Luna EMG, uh, the upper limb and lower limb. Uh, checking the muscles uh, and based on this assessment we can see what muscle which muscle what can we work really for then we can continue when we detect the muscle to work for we can continue with the EMG biofeedback right and some EMG biofeedback base again uh, and slowly slowly monitor the fatigue of this certain patient so how long can we can, can he contract uh, the muscle, we can always change the side and we can like provide the therapy from proximal to distal parts. Um, and we can use also the steering wheel for the balance axis. Um, another group, geriatric patients, uh, we can use uh, Luna EMG also for the elderly care for geriatrics. As at the beginning of the presentation, I also introduced the frailty syndrome and how uh, resistive exercise are really uh, crucial for uh, preventing the, the frailty syndrome for uh, of the, the, the elderly. So what is the frailty? This is the culmination of the effects of muscular musculoskeletal changes on the human body. Basically, the patient, uh, the, the elderly are losing their uh, muscle mass. Mm, it's, uh, of course, age-related. And uh, here, there's a lot of research behind suggesting that uh, the easy, of course, not overloading uh, with heavy resistance, but easy strength training, improve the strength and also reduce the weakness. Uh, even in very frail, very old adults. So we shouldn't be uh, afraid of uh, implementing the resistive training uh, among elderly. Uh, what are the main causes of frailty? There are two, the sarcopenia. So this is the degenerative loss of the skeletal muscle mass, uh, the quality and the strength. And here, of course, the resistive training is the first uh, top choice for the therapy. And another uh, cause is muscle weakness, and this is also known as a muscle fatigue. So here uh, we can use Luna EMG trigger and hold trigger and release uh, muscle because 
um, the patient can be involved on very little muscle activity. Um, and another uh, cause is also osteoporosis, which we can address um, with the therapy. And for the elderly immobilized in bed, there is also a big role of CPM right at the very beginning to prevent the effects of um, immobilization. Yeah, so to sum up, Luna EMG can be a good tool to prevent the frailty syndrome and this age-related loss of muscle mass. And we should apply the easy strength training to reduce um, the weakness even in very old uh, and very frailty patients. Um, early rehabilitation with Luna EMG, so the bedside treatment, we can apply it also at the ICU wards. Uh, this is a huge role of the rehabilitation on this um, particular stage of rehabilitation because the patient who started the rehabilitation procedures very early, so even uh, like a week after the stroke, uh, had really better long-term outcomes than that those uh, who um, started the rehabilitation way later, so even like one month farther. So the faster you start the rehabilitation, the better. You can start also like the in-bed training. And there is another study showing that for the upper extremity, constraint-induced movement therapy is also beneficial when started as early as possible. So also like um, uh, next to the patient's bed uh, and it should be started within two weeks after like the stroke. So with Luna EMG as it's portable mobile device on the wheels, you can transfer it to the patient bed. Uh, next to the patient bed, you can start the early mobilization of the patient uh, even when you are not able to uh, transfer the patient to the rehabilitation room. Some examples of uh, the in-bed therapy, um, early stage of rehabilitation for geriatrics and for um, our patient immobilized in bed, we can start in supine lying position with the therapist assistance, right? And also slowly, slowly the patient gets um, the higher position. So from uh, side lying, uh, from the lying position to sitting position next to the patient. But you can provide the full, uh, whole body rehabilitation treatment, right? Last but not least, the assessment um, on IMG can be also um, used for the assessment and uh, here you can see the patient uh, like in her 20s we met her on one hand, one of the tray shows with completed T11 spinal cord injury she was treated as an outpatient um, therapy in the UK and here uh, as it was like a trade show after 15 20 minutes of exercise the patient was really through uh, really really exhausted expressing she was very surprised that she got tired in comparison to walking for example in exoskeletons um and she was able to walk with the exoskeletons for 60 minutes with really little effort in comparison to 20 minutes working actively on luna and when we see here on the right hand side the evaluation right so the manual muscle scale you can see everywhere almost is zero in the, the, the manual so low but it's the same of the man, like manual muscle scale non-sensation everywhere she was assessed uh, as a zero, but actually quadriceps, when we put here like EMG electrodes, the surface EMG, uh, the, ma uh, the maximum voluntary contraction actually showed the result as like 15, around 16 microvolts. So it was really a great basis to start with her, uh, the reactive EMG uh, training of uh, those. And the patient who is already known uh, from the very beginning of our today's presentation, uh, just to show you the result of the assessment. Again, the similar situation, um, the patient was assessed as almost zero for all the tested muscles like uh, triceps, 
biceps, uh, it was zero, right? But um, during the EMG evaluation, his uh, zero actually transfers into uh, around 20 microvolts for the triceps and for uh, the pronator terrace, right? So uh, there is active contraction um, and we can work with this patient instead of whole passive movement, we can provide the active therapy. Okay, uh, to sum up, we can have some um, indications and contraindication on how we can use Luna EMG. The first um, is uh, spasticity. So remember that the spastic muscle is a weak muscle, right? So we need to improve the muscle force to make it stronger, to get uh, to lower the spasticity. And Luna EMG can be applied when the spasticity level is below three in um, Ashford, modified Ashford scale, right? So three is the top. Uh, when the patient has the spasticity over three, he is contraindicated for Luna EMG. And um, if there is no hand function, we can also recommend to uh, use the glove uh, with um, our extensions. The contraindications, as you can see here, they are listed and there are many of those, but we need to uh, remember that some of them are um, re re relative contraindication. Uh, we cannot really provide the therapy with the high-grade ataxia, with advanced osteoporosis, because there is a risk of fractures where uh, there, uh, there are some fractures. We uh, don't perform the training uh, when the, the fractures are unstable. Uh, when they are unstable vital function, this is clear like pulmonary or cardiocirculatory. We do not conduct the training when we cannot really fix the patient to the extension properly. Uh, when we do not have the patient with enough um, uh, cognitive abilities, of course, for those, you can always use CPM unless he is not um like a disturbing the therapy because he's maybe afraid right um and also acute and pronounced pain symptoms uh despite conventional pain therapy are also um contraindicated um so question and answer uh which um, the most common question which you can like hear from your customers which uh we observe um, are very popular uh and we face them a lot so is luna a good product for sports basically in the early rehabilitation stage yes we can use it so as a recovery from an injury for orthopedic, for uh, like all the alloplasty, uh, knee, knee and hip replacement, ACL, after all the surgeries, great. You can easily implement Luna EMG um, for all those patients. And um, actually uh, as an isokinetic machine or isokinetic exercises for the sports for athletes, it's not really the device um, dedicated for. Um, as you remember, the AMG has the isokinetic mold, which is called dynamic reversal, but this isokinetic mold is dedicated for clinically weak patients, so mostly at the early stage of rehabilitation for the orthopedic and the whole rehabilitation for the neuro. Another question which we um, hear a lot from you is that if single uh, joint therapy is better than multi-joint therapy, how can we compare? So there is a study of Milo from 2013, which shows that there is no superiority of multi-joint robot training versus single joint robot training. So we can easily apply the therapy for the single joint and uh, they are um, also uh, more affordable. Um, than multi-joint robotic training. Uh, 
why we use Luna IMG when there are other devices? So the more the, the biggest benefits coming from Luna EMG therapy. First of all, the EMG triggered assistive movement is more precise in regards to the patient engagement, right? Because we can use it for the patients who cannot really voluntarily remove their limbs. EMG um, force like uh, and, and the proprioception assessment. Um, most of the clinic, they don't really have standalone EMG device or isokinetic device, so uh, they can use it both for the assessment, for the patient evaluation, as well as further to provide the therapy, and it's all built up in the one device. It's pretty quick to set up. Some extensions require like several seconds um, to be prepared uh, for the therapy with the patient. Um, we have active assistive movement, which is very important also for the foot and to treat the foot drop. Mm. Um, we, based on the EMG, we can really use the muscle activity of the patient instead only on uh, of, uh, instead only the force sensor, which are um, uh, with in many devices. Um, we can precise, uh, apply precise strength training with different strength training programs with um, the isokinetic mode, with elastic resistance, isotonic training, and uh, we can provide repetitive movement. Uh, we're adjustable to the patient needs and abilities. And uh, as we have all in one device, so for all major body joint, together training and evaluation can be used uh, both next to the patient bed and also at the therapy room. Um, one therapist can operate more than one device at the same time. We have the um, experience with using four devices in the same time operated by one therapist. So it's really more cost effective for the, for the facility. And comparing to other systems regarding the spasticity, um, sensor-based or gravity-based devices are not really a good choice because they might lead to uh, some compensation um, and they will not really stretch the joint. Regarding the compensation with Luna EMG, uh, you can show the EMG activity level to the patients, so real-time EMG view, uh, to help to realize that there is the compensation. There is for the good example of that is the relaxation mode for the two channels work in our trigger and hold and trigger release exercise. And you can also very precisely adjust, especially with using um, the meso seat. Uh, you can adjust the position to avoid the compensation. So you can change the range of motion, you can change the patient position, you can slightly bend the patient or um, tilt a little bit. Um, how to work actively with patients without the movement? Here, this is our the, uh, here is the most unique feature. Uh, this is the EMG triggered assisted movement if in Luna EMG. And short setup time, I already told about it. So with Luna EMG adjusting some extension for the therapy takes just a couple of seconds. Okay, so um, that's it for today.